Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. A very good evening to everyone uh, who's watching. Uh, welcome to another session, a Facebook live session uh, with scholars of South Ilahi. Alhamdulillah, we're very happy to have yet another session with uh, our scholars uh, tonight. Uh, this is a very blessed night and uh, we're a few uh, more uh, days away from the blessed month of Ramadan. And I am, um, and it's only timely that we uh, we also reconnect back with the Quran. And tonight's class is uh, a tafsir of Surah Yasin, right? Uh, the tafsir of Sheikh Ibrahim Yas, uh, conducted by none other than uh, Imam Abdullah Endau, right? Imam Abdullah Endau, at the age of fourteen, he completed his memorization of the Quran in Kaulak, Senegal, and he spent three years studying the Islamic Institute of Sheikh Ibrahim Yas. He furthered his studies in Kuwait. Uh, and obtain an undergraduate degree in physical therapy from Kuwait University, and he has a doctorate of physical therapy. He is a certified orthopedic manual physical therapist and is also the director of Ypsilanti Rehabilitation Services in Michigan, USA, where he resides with his family. He is heavily involved in community service, volunteering activities with Hope Clinic in Michigan, and he serves as the Imam of the Tijani community in Michigan since the year 2007. And he has also established a weekend Quran school for children and adults, as well as Friday Sufi Halakas. And uh, if you have any questions, do send your, que uh, your questions to plus six five eight seven seven six seven seven zero six. Without further ado, Bismillah, I would like to invite Imam Abdullah Endau to begin the tafsir of Surah Yasin. Bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم والصراط الذين أنعمت عليهم وغير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر حق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار عظيم ورضي الله عن أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين لهم تشهد لنا في هذا المحضر وتحتف لنا بالنذر تأتي لنا بالظهر ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Beloved brothers and sisters wherever you are I greet you the greetings of Islam the greetings of the people of Jannah which is السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this bala, this pandemic of uh, COVID-19 or C-19, that Allah lifts it from us. If it is from a sin that we've committed, we turn to him, as he say, inni an al rahim as I am the one that forgives and most merciful that he forgives us. If it is from a crime that we committed against ourselves or against our fellow mankind, we ask for his mercy and his forgiveness so that he can lift this bala from us. As it is said, there is no bala that will come except from a sin, from sins that were committed, and it will never be lifted until repentance is offered. So we offer our repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him that he forgives us. We thank first and foremost the Sautul Ilahi community that facilitates this gathering for us to read, not to not to invent or anything, but read from what is written by our beloved Sheikh Wasila Maulana Shah Ibrahim. May Allah be pleased with him when, uh, of his tafsir of Surat Yasin. We thank and pray for all of them, all of the volunteers that Allah make this effort as a Sadaqajari or as a Ilmun Yuntafa'u Bihi. Uh, on the day of judgment and or make it uh, on the scale of good deeds on the day of judgment. Uh, we'll quickly go through the summary of what we've done so far. We've done the first few ayats of Surah Yasin. As I said earlier, Sheikh Ibrahim Saul told us in, in the book, the Riyadh al that uh, Surah Yasin has its own benefits and it was mentioned on the first two uh, classes and he today I'm not going to go back at it uh, we will uh, he also told us that Yasin is uh, one of those or the uh, 
separate letters that are in the Quran, as in so, so many surahs, but also it is called one of the names of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yaseen, as Taha is. Allah started the surah by swearing, right? It's a Yaseen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ba'd al-Iyazu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim. Yaseen wa al-Quran al-Hakim. Inna ka lamin al-Mursaleen. Ala surat al-Mustaqim. Tazil al-Aziz al-Rahim. Litunzira qawma ma unzira aba'ahum fawwa ghafilun. لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناق مغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مغمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون الله سوى by this by Yasin by the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and by this holy book that you the Muhammad you are one of the prophets because the people of Makkah were denying it. So he's swearing subhanahu wa ta'ala by what's, what's great, what's meaningful to him. Allah swears by only what's great, with what's meaningful to him, like what's sama'i wa ta'ala. What najmi is ahawa. As he mentioned these surahs, swearing by these things that are important to him. So he swore by the Quran and by Yaseen, the Prophet Wasallam, confirming that he is one of the prophets that he sent. These prophets are to warn the people. They turn to the common. It, let me turn to the common ma undira about home. So you can give them the warning as their forefathers were warned, as the, the prophets before Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned his people or their people in regards to what's coming to them. But they still were gafilun, they still were heedless, the people of Mecca and those who were before them. But indeed, the promise would come, for most of them will not believe. Most of them would not believe because it is bestowed upon them that they will not believe. They 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 bonded by their hair from their neck down to their arms, so they cannot see. Even when they try to bend down, they will not be able to see. And their eyes are veiled; they will not be able to see. There is a barrier from them, from their right and from their left. Their eyes are covered; they will not see. Whether you warn them or you do not warn them, they will not believe. The only people that will believe, those who follow the zikr, which is the book as Al-Quran is described, it is called Al-Quran for it is read, it is called Al-Kitab for it is written, or it is called Al-Zikr, it is a reminder. Those who follow the book, and those who fear Allah without seeing him, believing in the unseen. Give them the glad tiding of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, and the great reward. We indeed, we, we Allah indeed will be resurrecting those who are dead as we all will be dead and Allah would resurrect us on the day of judgment. And when we are resurrected, we will be shown or we will be given uh, we, everything that we have done in the past will be in the book. The book that will come as just of a book. The kitab in Mubin, the right book. Everything that they have done would be in the book and the book will be brought forth and account for everything that they have done. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَسْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِ مُسْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا فَعَذَّثْنَا بِثَالِثٍ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ لَمُرْسَلُونَ وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ Here Allah is telling them, the people of Mecca, tell them to think about or reminding them of the people of the village as we talked about the village in Antakya, a village in, in, in Turkey, where Sayyidina Musa had sent messengers to come and the messengers came and they do not believe them. The people of Antakya, Sayyidina Musa, Isa, Isa salam, Jesus Christ, when he was about to be taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had sent messengers to Antakya, two of them. And when they came to, to Antakya, they 
met a, a, a person or a farmer or a shepherd. His name is Habib Najjar. They called him into the deen and he believed. And they went on and they start calling the people of, of uh, the village in the deen and they, did, they rejected him. As they rejected it, Allah sent a third person. When they start arguing with them, they gave him the argument that we are sent by Allah to you. We did went through the details of these people and in the last lesson, just summarizing. We indeed are the messengers to you. And they asked them signs, they, they healed the, lep, the sick, and they make the blind see as Sidna Isa salam was capable of doing. But they still did not believe. And then they promised them and they told them that we've looked into your issues, we've, we've went to our consulted our kahana, our, our fortune tellers, and you are nothing but liars. If you don't stop, we will stone you to death. Habibun Najjar came. When they were about to stone them, Habibun Najjar came. And he told them, "Waja, I mean, Aqsal Madina is a rajul on Yasa. Kala ya qaum, itabi al Mursalin, itabi al Mala Yasalum Ajr. Who moved to Why, O oh people, my people, follow these people that are guided. They are calling you towards the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and ask for no reward from you. Itabi al Mala Yasalum Ajr. Who moved to Wa mali ala abdul ladi fatarani wa ilayhi turjaa. And they told him, "Are you one of them?" He said, "Why not?" I am going to follow the one who had created me from non-existent. Why don't I follow him? And he told them, I indeed would believe to the one who created me from nothing. Why don't I create me? From, why don't I believe in him? If he wants me good or harm, nobody else can come and intercede from what he wants off of me. So I believe in him. And they stoned them all to death. And they said when, when Habib Najjar was stoned before he hits the ground to die, Allah took him straight into heaven. And he tells him, he tells while he's going to Jannah, his concern was still about his people. And he said, Ya Laita Kawmi Yahlamun. I wish that my people had known. My wish that my people had known. So he's still concerned about his people. Ya Laita Kawmi Yahlamun Abima Ghafara Li Rabbi wa Jahalani Minal Mukarami. Allah had forgiven me and made me amongst those who are honored. So he was wishing and hoping that they had known that and they become one of those who would believe or, and be rewarded as he is. Then Allah goes on to give example. Allah is telling the people of Mecca, well, those people when the punishment was to come to them, we did not need to send the angels to come down. Angels came down only one time in the battle of Badr, battle of Badr when the Prophet ﷺ was giving the glad tidings by sending down 5,000 soldiers, 5,000 malaika. To fight with the believers. That's why Allah said, Wama and then Allah we did not send unto his people, min ba'di min jundin, no soldiers. Wama kunna mundilin, we did not send anything. In kanat illa soyhatan wahidatan, it was nothing but a scream from the malaika that would knock them all out. Faizahum khamidun, and they end up all being khamidun, lay still or dead. Ya hasrata la ibadi. Woe to my to my slaves. My atim in Rasulin illa can will be yesterday. They none will come to them except that they are they they except they are mockering they or they mark the messengers when they come as they were marking the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My atim in Rasul illa can will be yesterday. I will am here. Come, I like now. Come, no, I'm in the corner. And no, Elena, I like John. Don't they look about those people that were before them? and know that all of them shall return back to us. Let them understand that all of them after they die, they will be brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Let me give them an example if they don't believe that resurrection will happen. Look when at night comes in, we take from night, we bring daylight. Look at the ground. Let them take a look at the ground after it's died, after it becomes winter. When winter comes and spring comes back. After winter passes, spring comes back. Allah resurrected the dead grass to become alive. Again, examples he gives us. We brought from it all of these seeds that were just planted. We make fruits coming out of it. We make them turn into gardens. That is of dates and, and, and raisins or grapes. And we bring out of it wells of, uh, or lakes of water. So that they can eat and dwell from its bounties. And what they have done, what they planted, and you only put the seed and Allah will bring the barakah out of it and bring the fruits out of it. Don't they be grateful for Allah who gave them this opportunities? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhana ladhi khalaq al azwaj. Then he continues to praise. They say, glory to thee, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created a pair from everything. From everything he creates a pair. From even the plants and the seeds, because the plants, male and female plants, has to be uh, germinated from one plant to the, to the next by the, uh, the bees or the flies or even the wind. Women unforeseen from you yourself, you are as pair, male and female. Allah brings from it procreation, your genealogies or the, the descendants to, to procreate as he brings from every pair. And from what you don't even know, things that are, that are living that we do not know. How much of living things are in the ocean that we do not know. Every day the scientists discover insects, animals, fishes, birds that we did not know before. Now look also the night from which we bring in the day. When night comes, we bring days out of night. From the darkness comes in, the light comes in. It goes on. Look again how we can take the, the, the sun, make it revolve around its own orbit with a just calculation, the perfect calculation. From this calculation, this great, this mighty calculation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the well-knower. Also look at the sky, the moon, as we make it run its own orbit, its own orbit, and the, 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 the sun runs its own orbit and is calculated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not possible that the sun would catch up with the, with the moon. They will never collide. It's neither that the day would precede the night or the sun would, would, would come and catch up with the, with the, with the star, with the, with the Qamar or the moon. All of them are floating. All of them are flowing or, 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 or they are swimming in their own orbit as smoothly as it can be. This is where we stopped last time. At this point, I've read to another book of Tafsir of, of uh, Mutawilli Sha'arawi that he describes this, why this statement is used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sun would never come and precede the, the, the moon. The day will never, the night will never precede the day. He said, the people knew, they always did a calculation. They thought the night comes before the day. Before the night comes, then comes the day. So the night, then the day. Allah is telling them, the night will not precede the day. Then the night, the nahar will never precede the day. So neither the day comes before the night or the night comes before the day. So what happened? Day will not precede the night. Night will not precede the day. He said, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the, this planet is not flat. If the planet was flat and it comes in created to be facing the moon, the sun, disons, like it's facing the sun, then al-nahar yasbiqul layl. Then these are in the day and these people in the back are at night. But that doesn't happen. So it is not the day that precedes the night or the night precedes the day. So if it was created flat, then when sun comes up, it is unto these people the day. When it goes on, it is becomes then the, the day is before the night. But to explain that is what the scientists come to understand that the, the, the earth is the shape of an egg shape or an oval shape. That's why when these people are at day, these people are at night. Best example is you in Singapore, you are at night time. We in, the, in Michigan are in daytime. It's, they both were created at the same time. Both of these are created at the same time. So it is not that the day was before or the night was before, as you always say, which is first, the egg or the chicken? Allah knows. So now Allah created them to make both of them in existence at the same time. When these are on the day, these are on the night. So that is la shamsiyan barila and to dhikal qamar wa la laylu sadiqu nahar wa kullun fi falakin yasbahu. That's where we start from the last class. Now the next one is wa ayatun lahum anna hamalna dhurriyatuhum. It is the science and not Allah continuing to give them examples of his capabilities to resurrect them and resurrect us on the day of judgment as he is able to make all of these things happen. They come from the night. Resurrecting from the dead plants brings light, living, living food. Resurrected from us, bring from us our offsprings and children so we can carry on. And he goes on, from his signs that he carried your forefathers on the boat, talking about Sayyidina Noah. And now, Hamana Zuriatum, Abahum, their forefathers, Filfuluk al Mashroon, Sayyidina Noah from this, from the boat that he made with just woods and ropes. We created for them something similar. Minal Fuluk, shaped boats that are like the boats of Noah. Mayar Kabu, what they can ride and flow. But know that if we choose this, we will make them drown. There is no one that would come and respond to their screams. La Sariqa, ma antum bi musriqiyya, wala ana bi musriqikum. You will not be able to have anybody respond to your call for cry, cry of help. No SOS. No one will respond to your SOS. No one will come to save you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except him. Now, the example that I would give, and the people would, would give an argument and say, well, a boat is a boat. If you take wood and then carve it into a hollow shape and you put it on the water, it's going to float. Yes, it will float. But only Allah can make this boat reach its destiny, if he wills. If he does not, the boat will not reach its destiny. Only by the way, if we want, we will drown the boat. Nobody will respond. No one will be able to help them. Except mercy from us. And we will give them dwellings or bounties until a known period of time. The example that I would give is it is said that when Titanic, the biggest boat that was ever made, was made by those who made it. And they said that was in the 1800s. They even challenged the, when, the, when the maker was making it, the people come in to talk to him and praise him about the great job he did. He said, this boat can never drown. Nothing can drown this boat. And even God cannot drown this boat. Well, they had all of the life jackets. They have all of the, 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 the uh, many boats that would help them in case of, a, of an accident. But still, Allah drowned the boat by his will. So anything that happens is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want, we will drown it. And he wished and he drowned the boat. 
only by his wisdom. Why? Only Allah knows. There is no one that will respond to the SOS. None would come and to save them. Except that mercy from us and we grant them bounties or goods that they can enjoy until a known period of time. Be mindful, the people of Mecca. Fear of what you have done, what you have done in the past, and what you're doing right now, and what is awaiting for you, which is the punishment of Allah. What you've done right now, and what is in the past, and what is awaiting for you as the punishment of Allah or a reward. Maybe you can be enjoying the mercy of Allah. Maybe you can be amongst those who will be showered by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah continued to say, Whenever the miracles, whenever the signs, whatever Muhammad sallallahu was done to has ever done to them, they still will not respond. They will still would deny it. They still would deny whatever Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam gave them as signs of, of, the, of his nubuwa, they will still deny it. Mayatim in ayatim. It will not come with any ayah, any sign, illa kanu anha mu'aridun, except that they reject it. Wa idha qila lahum. Now, if they, the poor people of Mecca would tell them, Amfiku, please spend, share what Allah gave you. Share mimma razaqakum Allah. Share what Allah had given you. This is not what you own. So if Allah blesses us with anything in our hands, know that it is not what you own. Know that it is what Allah had given you. So share it. Spend it from what Allah had gave you. So when the people, the fuqara would ask them, share and spend from what was given to you by Allah. Those who are disbelievers would say, to the believers. Sheikh Ibrahim said, istihza and bihim. With mockery, they would tell them, or they're mocking them, or they're belittling them, telling them, are we going to feed those whom when Allah pleases, he would have fed them? Meaning, well, you're telling me that Allah does what he wants. He gives those whom he wants to give, and he deprives those whom he wants to deprive. So Allah had given us. Do you want us to be the one that would give to those whom Allah chose to make them poor? No, we let them poor because Allah wants them to be poor. In Amtum illa fi dalalin mubin, you were just lost, you were just losers, you were just, you know, out there. And they start now questioning. This is their response as mockery. And they would go on to, to question. But if even what you're saying is true, when is this promise, when is this thing that you're talking about is coming to us? When will it be? In kuntum sadaqin. If you're really telling the truth, when will this be? When will the punishment come? But Allah is telling them, They do not know that when it comes to them, it will only be one scream from the malaika. It will come and take them while they're arguing. They're sitting there arguing. The punishment would come or the scream would come from the malaika and will take them all, keep them all dead. At that moment, they will not be able to even go back and give a wasiyah, give a will, or give to their advisors to their family. Nor will they be returning back to their family. Everybody would die when it, when it comes. When the punishment comes, it will not allow anybody to have a chance to go back to your family and give advisors. So brothers and sisters, you and I need to know that punishment can happen anytime. So fear Allah in what you're doing, fear Allah in where you're going, fear Allah in, in your ibadat and in your mu'amalat. Because when it comes, there is no time to return back. When your time comes, there is no returning back. There is no adding one second. There is no deleting one second. But when the punishment comes in, the people who denied will not have a chance to give any wasiyah, any will, any advice to their family, and nor would they be able to return to their family. So Ibrahim said, quoting a hadith of uh, Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet said, 
when he allow wants to destroy the people when allah wants to destroy this world when the world comes to the end allah would send a wind a calm wind that will come and take the souls take the quran out of this world and the ulama they said when allah is taking quran it is not doing to take the books out allah would take those who are the people of quran out of this world when that is taken away for about 100 years allah would come back the malaika would come back and will take all of the believers out of this world as in the hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will not be able to go through the hadith and read it or is but is hadith of, uh, of anas and is in al bukhari then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send the malaika would come and take the believers and then the world will be left with about 100 to 120 years of no ibadat no one worshiping allah except the kuffar are left on this planet earth and there was no ibadah happening and at that time allah would send back another the malaika would come and then the second the scream would come to kill everybody on the planet all of the people faza hum khamidun taqudhumum yaqsimun fala yastati'una tawsiyatan wala ila ahlihim yad'un then everybody would be dead wherever they are everyone those who are in the middle of a fight they will die at the spot those who are in the market they will die at the market those who are in any place that's where their place of death would happen and everything would be quiet at that minute then allah would send the hadith continues allah would send the rain would come and the world, the planet would stay for 40 years being rested from all of these earthquakes from all of these natural disasters from all of these sins of mankind the rain would come the planet would the plants would grow the greenery would dominate for a long period of for a period of 40 plus years now at that time the hadith continues then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send when when the resurrection would come allah would send the 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 malaika the malaika to make another scream that would resurrect everybody back out from their graves ونفق في السور فاذا هم من الاجداس الى ربهم يمسنون then another blow would come and everybody would come flowing out of their graves الى ربهم towards their lord same time continue to tell us in another hadith here in another narration hadith of uh, bukhari as well in, in the sahih al-bukhari and muslim hadith tirmidhi that at that time when allah wants the moment of resurrection after this period of 40 years the earth is all green forest are all over allah would send jibril mikail and israfi to come and take the they go to jannah and take the clothing of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they will take his ride to go bring him out because he is the one that would first be resurrected and i awwalu man tanshaq al ard min al man tanshaq al ard al ard I will be the first one of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam I will be the first that the earth would open up for me to come out Jibril the malaika would come and they have his daba his ride and his clothing and they would start going towards Medina but because everything looks like the same no cities no villages no one knows where they will say to Jibril you are the one that knows the way to Medina so take us because you are the used to go to Medina Jibril would take them to medina and they will come to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they will wake him up sallallahu alaihi wasallam will wake up they will cover him and his first thing that he will say he say ummati 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 my people my people because of his love sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallu ala nabiyyina muhammad all of his care all that he wants that we are those who will be in jannah with him alayhi salam so he will call for his ummah He said at that time I'm the first one that the earth would open out for me to come out and when he comes out he looks around he sees nobody but he sees Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam muttakin ala al-arsh ala al-arsh he says Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is standing by the throne of Allah he said I do not know where the Musa was resurrected before me nufiqa fi ruh was the ruh was blown into him or was he the one that was saved because of his first sahqa when you first remember musa alayhi salam when he asked in surah al-baqarah oh allah let me see you allah told him you will not be able to see me qandur ila al-jabal in istaqara makana fatarani 
Falamata Jalalu Jalalu Daka. When Allah told him, look at the mountain, if it stays in its place, then you would see me. When the Allah manifests to the mountain, the mountain becomes pulverized. He say whether that was because he has that saqa, that first one, he was saved from the saqa thaniya or not. But he sees Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Now when the when they, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants everybody now to come after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with Abu Bakr and Umar. Because he would ask his real to wake Abu Bakr and Umar, they will be awakened. And Allah would rain now onto this planet, liquid or rain that is thick. This rain that is thick will look like the rain of, uh, of thick as water as, as semen that comes down onto the planet Earth. And as it comes down to the planet Earth, people would come out of their graves, all from each one, tens, hundreds, and thousands of people coming out of their graves. And as they come out, they say, woe to us. Who had resurrected us? Who had wakened us from our sleeps? You see, there was the first Saqqa, the first Saqqa, which is what killed everybody, and the second Saqqa, which is what raised everybody. Between those two, every, those who even were dead at that time were not even being punished. The people of hell are still even at that moment between the two Saqqas, they all calmed down, no punishment. Everybody is at a sleep. Everybody is a moment of pause. And that's when they say, Ya waylana, man ba'athana min marqadina. Who had awakened us from our rest, from our a uh, pause, but they say, "Hada ma wa'ad al-Rahman." This is what was promised to us by Allah. Wasadaq al-Mursalun, and those who were sent indeed had told the truth. In kanat illa sayhatan wahida, fa idha hum jami'un ladaina muhdarun. It is not but one scream that came from the malaika that all of mankind will be pulled up to go meet their Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jami and all of them, Ladaina Muhdarun, they will be brought forth in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulluhum fil mahshar. As they say, Shay Ibrahim said, all of them on the day of resurrection. Now on that day, Allah tells us, Falyomala to Zlamunashun Shayan, wala to Gizona illa ma kumtum ta'amalun. This day we will not do injustice to no one. No injustice will happen to no one. No one will be unjustly treated. You will not be rewarded except except what you have done in the past. Then that moment, everybody was mixed up. You could not tell between the believers and the non-believers until the call comes, until Allah calls. Be separated, you the criminals, the non-believers. Allah, those who were, you did not believe into the deen, Allah would separate them from those who believe. Now they become separated. The believers on one side, the non-believers on the other side. Allah continued, gives us now the next step, which is what happens to the believers. I was hoping to stop there, but let me finish, go on a little bit more uh, to, in, in this part. Because we still have about five minutes, Bismillah. In the Ashab al Jannati Yoma, on that day, the people of heaven, now we were told in the beginning of Surah Yasin, as Allah promised us or swear by us that Muhammad وسلم, was the real deal. And He gave us the scenario of those who did not believe what will happen to them and told us what will happen to them is what happened of the people of the Qariya, the village that were before them. The people of Makkah, be mindful, this could happen to you. Then we go on to tell us, Allah is telling us that resurrection, don't have any doubt, resurrection would happen. If you don't believe that resurrection had happened, take a look at the night, take a look at the day, how they come from one another. Take a look at these planets, how the sky, the, the, the sun revolves in its own orbit, the moon revolves in its own orbit. This is not the work of a human being because there is no collusion that happens between the two of them since the beginning of time. They all follow on their own pace. Take a look at yourself, how we bring one from one another. From the two of you, we bring another one. Take a look at the plants, how we can take from the, from the seeds and we germinate it and bring food for you, bring gardens. Take a look at all of these things. We do this. We're able to do this to you. We're able to resurrect you. And he gave us now a scenario of what happened on this day of resurrection. 
how will it happen? How will end the world when everything is ended and how we will come back from dead to livings? And I gave us a scenario. He gave us a scenario as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described it. This will happen. Everybody will die. Everybody will stay into the Hamidun, will be calm and quiet and stay in the moment of tranquility until the second Nafqa would come and everybody is resurrected. Now the story continues. Now the people, everybody is resurrected, stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be judged just fully for what we have done. At that moment, believers and non-believers are mixed. Allah separate them. Non-believers on the side and the believers on the side. Allah is calling now, telling the believers what is awaiting for you and I if we keep on to the Sirat al-Mustaqim. In the Ashab al-Jannah, those the people of Jannah, al yawma fi shughlin said, Allah will grant them their spouses. They will grant them everything that they want. They will not work. They will not be tired from work. They will not have families to worry about. There is no work. There is nothing. There is no day. There is no night. There is no need for sleep. There is no need for awakening. Everybody is in this enjoyment. They will be now, nothing would be preoccupying them. They're now in Jannah. And what would preoccupy them? All with their spouses are now in their beds or their swings or their uh, thrones, whatever life grants them to be enjoying their, them and their spouses would be there enjoying it. they were leaning onto it. Now if he's describing, Allah is describing what Jannah would look like. So that we can comprehend it. And you see, we're told Jannah has this fawakia, Jannah has this as well, these wives and spouses, Jannah has this good and that good. But in another hadith Rasulullah Wasallam said told us Jannah is so beautiful. That it is not something like la ainun rad. No eye has seen it. Wala uzunun samiat. No ear has heard the description. Wala qatara fi qalbi basharun qattu. It has never dawned in the mind of a human being to imagine what Jannah looks like. But we're just giving these examples because this is what we know. We love our fawakir. We love our, our, our fruits. We love our meat. We love our all of these things that we love. We are being told that this is available to you when you get there. You love to sit in a nice bed, nice, nice throne, nice swing, swing uh, couches and whatnot. Allah will tell you that would be available to you. Salamun qawlan min Rabbin Rahim. Now comes the angels telling them, telling the believers, peace be upon you from your Lord that is most merciful. Then the, the non-believers would be told, Separate away you, the non-believers, from the believers. And get separate yourself from the believers. Don't mix up with them. And the people of Jannah, that we hope you and I would be amongst them, will say, Oh, thank God. Alhamdulillah, thank God for having saved us from all of these non-believers. Have we not promised you that this will happen? Ya Bani Adam, you the children of Adam, Allah ta'abudu shaitan, do not worship shaitan. As if Allah is talking to you and I today. That be mindful that this will happen. You were promised not to worship shaitan. Innuhu lakum aduun mubeen. This is your greatest enemy because he's the one that took your father Adam from the Jannah. Ani abuduni, worship me alone. Worship me alone and obey me. Wahdi wa ati'oon. Respect me and uh, obey me and, 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 and worship me. Hada sirat al-mustaqim. Doing that is the righteous path. is the straight path. Walakad adalla minkum jibillan kathira. Know that shaitan has taken away a large number of you. A large number of the creation, the children of Adam. Kathiran. Afalam takunu taktaqilun. Are you not mindful? Are you insane? Are you not with your faculties? You and I need to be reminded of this. 
Has he jahannam ulati kuntum tu adun? Oh, you the kuffar, now the disbelievers. He described the jannah, described the people of the believers, what will happen to them. Now he's describing the people that are non-believers, what will happen to them. Has he jahannam ulati kuntum tu adun? This is the hellfire that you were promised. اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون from what you have been a disbelievers as you disbelieved it in the past so inshallah inshallah the next time we'll pick up from here and hopefully be able to finish the rest of surah yasin in the next class uh, we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who would say samina wa atana wa mufana karabbana wa ilayka almasir that we benefit of the benefit of surah yasin as it is a reminder and warning as it is was said, Yasin called Qalb al-Qur'an, the heart of the Qur'an, because everything in it is umur al something that are unseen. It talks about Allah, it talks about resurrection, it talks about Jannah, it talks about Nar. We believe in it as believers and we haven't seen it. It is in our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he illuminates our hearts Amen. with this deen so we can see the right and see the wrong and keep us following the right and keep us away from the wrong. واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما اغلق والخاتم لما سبق الناصر الحق بالحق والهادي الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم امام كان يو هير مي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته يس اي كان هير يو الحمد لله ثانك يو سو ماتش امام انداو فور ذا كلاس اون ذا تفسير اوف سوره ياسين Uh, I think we managed to get a lot of gems from that class. We have a few questions coming in. So uh, we, we start with the question and answer, inshallah. Okay, bismillah. bismillah. So the, uh, Imam, the first question is asking, Surah Yasin is considered as the heart of the Quran. Uh, why is this so? Is it because it is the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yes. As I mentioned at the end of the, of, of the class, is, uh, Surah Yasin contains ghaibiyat, things that are unseen. Things that you only can believe in. And the belief is in the heart of a person. It talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've never seen it. Mm -hmm. It talks about we as, especially for us, we've never seen the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we believed in him. It talks about heaven as I ended up the class. The, the class. What will happen on the day of judgment? How will the, day, the world end? How will the resurrection happen? How will Jannah happen? What will happen in Jannah? What will happen in Nar? And we believe in all of these things in our hearts and we haven't seen it. So it, this is one of the reasons why it is called Qalb al-Qur'an. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Imam. Uh, for the next question, the person is asking, when I was a kid, I saw my grandmother read Surah Yasin on um, like a cup of water for me to drink if I am mm -hmm. sick. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the person said that they got better. Uh, what do you think of uh, this imam? Well, as it is said, it's a hadith that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, Yasin lima quri ala. Yasin, it is for whatever it is read for. It is for whatever it is read for. So that is a ruqya. That is a ruqya which is uh, healing from using the Quran. So he uses the Quran and reads Surah Yasin on it and gives it to you. Alhamdulillah, Allah had healed you. So don't deprive your children from it. It is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the beginning, the first class we did, we talked about the benefits of Surah Yasin, what it can do for you, what it can do. Allah told us in the Quran, there is a healing in the Quran and mercy for those who believe. So this is part of it. So you were healed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with his words. Subhanallah. Because it's very common uh, that uh, for any majlis, uh, Imam, they will have like, lot of water around and then they'll read the Yasin, I guess, because uh, sometimes we have a lot of people who say, you know, why, why are you doing this? I guess it's good that uh, you made this clarification. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, okay. yeah. For the next question, Imam, uh, some scholars said mm -hmm. that when we are resurrected on the day of judgment, uh, that we will face uh, severe anxiety um, because, you know, of uh, all the uh, kind of scary things that's happening on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. um, how mm -hmm. do we prepare for that eventful day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, on that day, as we, we're told, even in the Quran, that uh, everybody runs away from your family, even your children, your wife, your, sp your spouses. 
everybody runs away from one another. And all that they would say, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. You're only afraid because, you know, it, it is a scary day. We're standing to face Allah and being judged. We know what we have done. You and I know what we've done, how much good we've done, how much wrong we've done. We've repented, but we don't know if he accepts it or not. So yes, it is scary. So how can you prepare for that day? Is increase your istighfar. Ask for forgiveness constantly and try to stay on the straight path. Try to stay on the straight and narrow. So that way you at least when that day comes, you would have more comfort within yourself. Allah would put in your heart the comfort. You see, this fear mostly is in the hearts of those who are non-believers. This fear would be in the hearts of those who are mostly destined to have. But those of us whom Allah had blessed to be going to Jannah, he will get, he put in our hearts sakina. He will put in our hearts tranquility that we will not be as scared as the other one. Those who did not do enough of a good deed. And we hope that we will be amongst them. So the advice is stay in the straight and narrow. narrow. Stay in the sirat al-mustaqim. That you ask Allah every day that ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Keep me on the straight and narrow. That's the only way you can prepare for it. I mean, inshallah, may Allah help us on that day. Yeah, I mean, thank you so I much. Mean. Imam, uh, there's another question here. Um, you know, there's a certain line of uh, Surah Yasin. I think, Salamun qawlam me rabbi rahim. I think certain mm -hmm. ayahs, they will tend to repeat the uh, ayah. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, mm -hmm. explain a little bit more why is it that certain ayah, they'll tend to repeat a few times? You see, when you, when you look at the meaning of, of the ayah, Salamun, peace, qawlan, words of peace, min rabbin rahimin, from the Lord that is most merciful. So you're saying words of peace from the merciful Lord. Words of peace from the merciful Lord. So these are, you are drawing into the meanings of it, that you're hoping this meaning would come with you, with, around you. Salam, peace would come to you. As of right now, our Imam Sheikh Ahmed Tijan Sise in, 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 in Medina Bay had given a, a dua for us to, to say during this day, 131 times of salam and qawlan min rabbin rahimin, to keep saying this, asking Allah that these words of peace from this Lord of mercy would come to us, giving us peace. So we're longing that the meaning of these words would come to us from what we, al latif we say, ya latif, ya latif, we're asking the lutf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be to us. Ya Rahman, ya Rahman, we're asking the mercy of Allah to come to us. We're saying, Rabbana atina fi dunya, oh Allah who is the mercy, give us mercy in this dunya and the akhirah. Rabbi inni zalam tu nafsi wa amitu su an faghfirli. This is not what we say. This is what somebody else said before. And we're repeating it, hoping that with these words, Allah would shower us that mercy as he did to the one before. The people of Jannah, the malaika would come to them and tell them, Salamun qawlan min rabbin rahimin. Words of mercy from the Lord that is merciful to you, the people of Jannah. So we're repeating it to ourselves today that salamun qawlan, words of peace from the merciful Lord come to us while we're still alive. So we have peace and safety from any harm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Imam, uh, for all of the answers. Uh, and may Allah bless you and grant you good health. Amen. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you. Uh, we, we hope thank that you. we can continue to benefit from your classes. Exactly. Inshallah. Uh, is it okay if you, you give us a closing dua? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-rahman rahim maliki wa muddin. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in ahdina surat al-mustaqim wa surat al-lazina namta alayhim ghayri al-maqdubi alayhim wa raddali. Ameen. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا قرة عاوين وجعنا للمتقين إماما ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا ما لبرا ربنا وأتنا ما وعتنا على رسلك ولا تغزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف البعاد ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهدي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين
امین جزاك الله خير الحمد لله ثانك يو سو ماتش اللهم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته All right, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, we've just ended the class with Imam Abdullah Yandau. We hope that uh, that was a very beneficial class and we hope that you continue to tune into our live Facebook lectures. Yeah, just a few more announcements. Um, we are still uh, looking for your contribution to our hospital project uh, to build a hospital in Senegal, Taibanias. And if you're keen, uh, do go to our launch good site, bit.ly slash hospital 2020. Uh, if you have any questions or any issues with that, you can just um, write in a question at our social media uh, and someone will get back to you, inshallah. And uh, with that, um, do check out our uh, upcoming exclusive Ramadan uh, specials. Uh, so stay tuned on our social media pages, Instagram and Facebook for our live lectures and uh, what's coming up for the month of Ramadan. And with that, thank you so much. Please pray for us, our volunteers and everyone. Uh, we may inshallah may Allah bless us and may Allah bless our Ramadan inshallah. With that, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh.